Welcome back. In the previous video, I talked about the time bound aggregations. The time bound aggregations are computed for a specific time window. The time window could be anything as one week, an hour, or even a minute or a second. It all depends upon your business requirement. These time bound aggregates are also known as window aggregates. Why? Because they are computed for a fixed time window and they are valid only until the window expires. In this video, I'll talk about the window aggregates in general and also define an example. So, let's start. In the stream processing world, time windows are of two types, tumbling time window and sliding time window. Now, let's try to understand the tumbling window using an example and I'll cover the sliding window in the next lecture. Let me plot a simple graph. My x-axis is the trigger time and the y-axis is the event time. You already understand the trigger time, right? The trigger time is the wall clock time which represents the start of a micro batch. In this graph, I have three triggers. What does it mean? I mean, I am plotting three micro batches. The first micro batch starts at 10, second micro batch starts at 10, 10, and the third one at 10, 20. Make sense? The y axis is the event time. The event time is the actual time when the event was generated. If you consider the invoicing example, then the event time is when the invoice was actually generated. The event time is often shorter than the trigger time. I mean, the invoice could be generated at 10.01, but it may take 2 minutes to reach your Spark application and it will be picked up in the next trigger, which is 10.10, right? Now the next thing is to conceptualize the time window. So, how many time windows can you think here? If I consider the trigger time, I can create only two windows. Why? Because the trigger time is fixed. I decided to create a 10 minute trigger and hence I cannot even conceptualize a time window which is smaller than 10 minutes. Right? In fact, trigger time is entirely a different thing. It is the frequency at which you want to process the records and produce the output. It has nothing to do with the time bounded aggregations. The aggregation window is never ever based on the trigger time. I often see beginners getting confused and thinking of the window aggregates around the trigger time. No, don't do that. Trigger time is a frequency of your micro batches. It has nothing to do with the aggregations. Aggregation windows are never ever based on the trigger time. Great. So now we are left with the event time only. Can you conceptualize a 5 minute window? Here is my first window. It starts at 10 and ends at 10.05. The second window starts at 10.05 and ends at 10.10 and so on. These two windows will be processed together at 10.10. Why? Because the micro batch starts at 10.10. Make sense? If you want, you can have a 1 minute window. It looks like this. All these 10 windows will be processed at once when the next micro batch starts. However, if you create one minute window, it makes a good sense to have a one minute trigger. Similarly, you can have a 20 minute window. Even if you have a 10 minute trigger, it looks like this. Half of the window is processed at 1010 and the remaining half is processed at 1020. The point is straight. The aggregation window has nothing to do with the trigger time. The trigger is the time when you start processing in a micro batch. Make sense? Now let's try to formulate a simple problem and create an example to get a clear sense about the window aggregation. Let's assume you are getting continuous stream of stock trade events. Each event looks like this. The transaction time is the actual time of the trade. So that one is your event time. The transaction type is buy or sell and the amount is the trade value. We also have a broker code. You are supposed to create the following output which refreshes every 15 minutes. Your data visualization team is going to use this output to draw the following graph. You will produce data every 15 minutes and the visualization team will refresh the report. Make sense? Think about the solution. I am asked to produce the result every 15 minutes. So my trigger should be 15 minutes, right? What do I need to compute in those 15 minutes? Looks like a simple aggregation, right? The outcome is to compute two sums. Sum of buy transactions 
and another total of the cell transactions. The net value is a difference between these two, right? However, these sums should be grouped in a 15 minute window, isn't it? And that's a super critical concept. The time window is nothing but a grouping column, right? So you should not be getting confused in all these jargons. A time window is nothing more than a grouping column. Remember that. Great. So my window time should be 15 minutes. Make sense? Now let me draw a graph. Here it is. So my trigger time is 15 minutes and I want to create a 15 minute event time window. Each shaded box is the desired window. Now let's assume I got an event. The transaction was created at 10.05 and it reaches to my application at around 10.10. .10. I have another event generated at 10.12 that reaches the system a few seconds before the trigger. Similarly, I have these other events. Now let's consider one more event. This event was generated at 10.25. However, it was stuck somewhere and arrived at 10.44. As a result, this event doesn't fall inside the window. Why? Because it is a late arriving event. So we have five events arriving on time and we also have an event which comes late. That's all. We will create an application and test it with these six transactions. This simple example will help you to understand how windowing aggregates are implemented and how they behave. I'll write the code and run it in the next video. But before I close this lecture, let me highlight one last point. All these windows that we created here are known as tumbling windows. Tumbling windows are a series of fixed size, non-overlapping time intervals. So in this example, we are creating 15 minute fixed size windows and they do not overlap, right? The other type of window is known as the sliding window, which is an overlapping window. I'll cover sliding window in a later video. Great. That's all for this video. See you again. Keep learning and keep growing.